What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, obviously at this stage we're looking at doing rings. Uh, we obviously need to get the rings ready to install before we can actually put anything on, which means we need to gap them. Uh, so gap ring, ring gap's pretty important. Um, basically if you've got too little gap, you're very likely to, for the, uh, the engine to grab a ring. And if you've got too much gap, um, then you're going to get blow-by issues and burning oil and uh, things you don't want. So. Basically, what your ring gap is going to be is going to be determined by uh, the ring manufacturer, your engine, and the application. Uh, generally, for a boosted application, um, ring gap is just a little bit more just to allow for that, that extra cylinder pressure. For um, Same thing with, with massive compression motors, uh, often you have your ring gap a little bit looser. For mild, um, naturally aspirated uh, applications, a lot of people will, will uh, tighten that ring gap up a little bit. But it all just yeah depends on, on on your manufacturer who manufactures your rings, what they state it should be, what your application of the engine is going to be, and uh, what engine it's going in as well. So for this, uh, what I'm going to go off um, because I actually haven't even checked what manufacturer the rings I'm going to be using are. I'm going to go off basically standard RB practices um, for an, for an actually aspirated motor, which is around uh, for the for the top compression is around 0.2 to 0.35 um, with you know plus or minus 0.04 as well as the the second compression ring I think they're around 0.18 to 0.28 or something like that either way I'm, I'm not too worried about this motor particularly just because of what it is it's going to be a very mild um, very mild engine uh, it's not going to be anything too crazy so I'm not too worried just as long as the ring gaps aren't too tight for me so anyway we'll get into Gap in these rings, and um, I'll show you exactly how to go about doing it. Right, so first things as tools we're going to need. Uh, firstly, obviously, ring pliers, very handy tool to have when you're doing rings. This here is called a ring gap file or a uh, ring gap tool. Pretty self explanatory. It is for filing down your rings to get the correct ring gap. Uh, very handy tool. Obviously, it's not necessary, you can do it without it, but uh, very handy tool to have. Um, and that's essentially all you need. Oh, and some a good set of feeler gauges because that's how you measure your ring gap. So, first thing I'll do is grab the rings off the pistons that I won't be using. So these are the flat top, flat top pistons that came out of this motor, which I will not be using. Obviously, I'm using dome tops because I want the extra compression. However, these are the rings that came from these bores. So these are the rings that I will be using. They still look, they look like I haven't done much work. I dare say this engine was ringed when it was uh, rebuilt, which wasn't long ago. Obviously we know that it died because someone installed the engine wrong. So just want to get these rings off. I always find with motors, I like to pay very close attention when pulling things apart. Um, obviously even things you think might be the most trivial little things, you can learn a lot about uh, whoever put the motor together and how they built the motor by paying close attention to how it comes apart. So obviously these rings came out of a motor that was built with turbo pistons and uh, was in a motor that was turboed so I would expect whoever put this together uh, to have gapped these rings a little on the on the large side. So that's what I would expect. Now obviously each ring is gapped to the bore specifically so you want to make sure you keep the ring with the bore. Uh, so this is obviously came off piston number one. It's going to go on to piston number one. I'm going to, going to use bore number one to measure it. So to measure it, what you want to do is get this ring down into the bore on its own. And you want to try and get it real flat and you need to get it down past the lip of the bore to get an accurate indication of, uh, of the gap. Now the best way to do that is literally just to use a nice clean piston. So here we've got bore one, piston number one. So all I'm going to do here is uh, just Compress the ring just into the top of the bore. Just get it in there. Just so it's started, just inside that. Get your piston and just keep it nice and flat and just push it down into the bore just a little bit. And this obviously gets your piston, your, your ring in there nice and, nice and flat, nice and level and past the loop, which gives you an accurate reading of the gap. So obviously now that you've got your ring in the bore, uh, you've got your little gap where the ends of your ring meet. So you just want to take your feeler gauges, 
obviously I'm looking at a 0.2 to a 0.35 ish so first one I'll try is a 0.3 A little bigger than a 0.305, which I'm happy about. Quite large by the looks. Quite a bit of ring gap. So this ring's got to about 0.78, which is very, very quite large. It's uh, larger than I expected, actually. So obviously your ring filer has a direction on how, which way to run the file. Um, and basically, when you file the ring, you always want to make sure the file's running in towards the center of the ring. Uh, that way, if you get any dags or anything that uh, you know, shouldn't be there, um, it's filed towards the piston, not towards the bore. Because if you have dags or bits of file shavings or anything towards the bore, it's gonna cause you a lot of issues. Uh, so basically, you wanna make sure... Also, I'll show you on this tool. It's got these two little tapered, tapered bits here. So the way that's designed is to uh, push the ring into them and actually push on the ring from the back. And what this does is as it closes the ring down, it, it evens out the gap. Because if you just squeeze it from side to side, what you'll end up doing is having a bigger gap at the bottom and a smaller gap at the top because it'll taper. So the way that's designed is to push forward, which makes sure that as it files, it files that gap down evenly. And uh, basically, yeah, that's the way you run it. And you run that stone towards the center like so. And you file them down and you just keep File, sit in, measure, file in, measure, file in, measure until you get the right, the right ring gap. It is a very, very timely, like lengthy process. A lot of your compression rings will have uh, like a dot or a nib or something. That's just to basically to um, signify that that goes towards the top of the piston. Um, some rings are all different as I stated at the start of the video. Uh, it all depends on basically who makes your rings and what they are. Some compression rings have a, uh, a taper on the inside. Usually your taper will go towards the top. And the reason for that is obviously the way compression rings work is as they come up in the cylinder and it creates pressure in the cylinder, that pressure is forced over the sides of the piston and into the top compression ring groove. And uh, through that little uh, flat, uh, sorry, through that little taper, it actually forces air down and into behind the back of the ring and that forces the ring out and seats it on the bore, which seals the bore and gives you good compression. Um, obviously then during uh, firing, it does the same thing. So it's very important for that. Um, on this one, the reason that this oil ring has a dot is because it's actually got a taper on the outside. And uh, the reason for that is as it comes up the piston, this ring will actually sort of flex down a little bit and uh, that will just allow it to, to pull basically that up, up the side of the bore, and then when it fires, this piston will flat, the, this ring, sorry, will flatten out and scrape all the oil off the bore as it comes down. So uh, basically, it's, it's all, it all depends on what sort of rings you run and who makes your rings. Um, but if you would like a more in depth uh, <laughs> explanation on how rings actually work, uh, let me know and I might do a video uh, explaining exactly how rings work and what rings do what. So anyway, I'll measure the second compression ring. So it appears this compression ring is about the same, around that 0.78, uh, which again is, is quite, quite a bit of gap. Alrighty, so I'll just check cylinder number two with those rings as well, just for uh, basically a assure, sureness. Um, same thing where the rings out of that turbo motor came up at a 0.08 mil, which is very, very, very large gap. Um, so after thinking about it for a while, I think um, given that the motor, the bearings and all that were quite fresh and it looks like these rings are, are quite new, 0 .08, uh, 0 0.8 mil is uh, 32 thou, 32 thousands of an inch. So without knowing who makes the rings or what their, uh, what their gaps were meant to be, it certainly seems possible that whoever built this motor got their thousandths of an inch confused with their millimeters because 0.32 mil is uh would be pretty correct quite close but um 0.08 mil actually equates to around 32 thou so i think whoever gapped these rings in this motor 
fucked it up a bit, um, and I reckon they've gone to gap them at 0.32 mil and accidentally gapped them to 32 thou. Um, this is just me guessing, I'm assuming. Um, it just it doesn't look like the bores or looking at the, the bearings that the rings were in this motor for long enough to wear down that far. Um, so anyway, the rings that actually came off these pistons that were in the naturally aspirated motor uh, are gapping up at around 0.4 mil, which is about uh, 12 to 13 thou. Well, again, I've checked two cylinders. Um, this is a lot, a lot better gap than 0.8. So basically, uh, the rings that came off these pistons are going to go back on them. Um, I am going to open them up a little bit more. I'm going to open them up to about 18 thou, given that it is going to be a boosted motor with uh, high compression pistons. So you will actually get to see me gap them up. But uh, I'm not going to use the rings that came off those turbo pistons because it just doesn't seem right. There's way too much gap. I'll end up with issues with um, blow by and I'll end up with issues burning oil and it's just uh, not going to happen. So I'll, uh, yeah, as much as I'd like to think that they're that big from where, it just doesn't seem like this motor was running for long enough for them to get that bad. I really believe that someone just messed up and, and gapped them to the wrong, wrong specs. So I'm going to go ahead and gap all these other rings now that I'm going to use. So that's all the compression rings gapped. You can see them sitting in the balls there. They're allocated to. Uh, so I've got them all at 18 thou, which is about 0.45, which I believe I think will be a good gap for a high compression boosted engine. And when I say high compression, I mean standard RB30 compression, which is like nine and a half to one, which still isn't very high compression. <laughs> but anyway, regardless. So now that that's done, you can start actually ring in your pistons so we'll go through that all right so as far as actually installing the rings on your piston obviously you have your oil expandering now you'll see the gap in the oil expandering will always end both on the same side up or down you want to make sure that you put that down you want that to be downwards so it just goes in the bottom groove of your piston so on your piston you'll have a dot or some sort of marker usually. This is to indicate the front of the motor. So basically it just means that the piston will sit in the motor like yay and that will be towards the front. So what I generally like to do, everyone does this differently, um, is I like to put my oil expander ring with the meeting gap directly at the back of the piston. So there you go, you've got your dot for the front of the piston, your oil expander ring meets right at the back. Then you take your two oil retaining rings. And then generally, I'll put each one about 45 degrees out from the gap. Obviously, when you're putting rings on your piston, you need to ensure all the gaps don't line up, otherwise you're going to get a crazy amount of blow by. So that's the front of your piston, that's where the gap in the oil expander ring is. So this one, you sort of turn it about 45. So then you want this one obviously about 45 degrees out in the other direction. So it's gonna be around there. So there you go, that's your oil retainer and rings and uh, expansion ring in there. You can see it's probably hard to see on camera, but that's where the oil retainer ring gap is. So the bottom, uh, sorry, the oil expander ring gap is. The bottom retainer ring gap is around this side, 45, and the other one is around, the top one is around that side, 45. 
So then you want to take your middle compression ring. This one has no chamfers, and as I said, it's got some writing on there, R and S. Usually you assume that's to the top. Often they will have a dot of some sort of indication as to what is for the top of the piston. So I like to do the same thing uh, basically with these ones. So you've got front of the piston there, that's the back. Obviously you based your oil rings around the back of the piston. These are gonna be based around the front. So with the second one, I normally go front of the piston, then 45 degrees up. And I uh, find these compression rings are a lot easier to put on with ring pliers. And obviously these rings are gonna move around, but you just check them again before you actually install. Um, it also, Personally, like these rings in the ball will still move around quite a bit. So it's not exactly massively detrimental, but you just you really want to make sure it doesn't get installed with all your ring gaps down one side or one way because you will just end up with all sorts of issues. So now we've got the top compression ring. Uh, this ring is chamfered on the inside and that chamfer goes towards the top. And as I was stating, that is because uh, it allows uh, gases to get around the piston and in behind this ring and expand it when it's in compression. It's the same thing where it's gonna to be towards the front and then 45 down. Now you haven't done measuring gaps as well. Another actual measurement you need to take to ensure it's not too tight. With this one, I'm not gonna worry because these are quite loose. That's not gonna be a problem, but sometimes with new rings, they can be too tight, which causes issues. Uh, is your side gap or your side loading on the on the ring groove. So normally you have to fit a uh, a feeler gauge down there to ensure that that's not too tight. Um, I think generally tolerance is around 0.06 mil around that area. Don't quote me, I'm not too sure. But uh, obviously the issue is if, the, if that is too tight in the groove, it won't allow the gases to get in behind that ring and it won't allow it to expand and seal properly, uh, which does create a big issue. But um, as I said, I'm not gonna really bother with these because that's quite loose. So I'm happy with that. And uh, that's pretty much rinse and repeat for all six. And they'll be ringed up, ready to go. So you have all the pistons ringed up, ready to go. And that's essentially how you gap and uh, ready your rings. So thanks for watching guys. As always, smash like, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, next episode, we're gonna be looking at bearing tolerances. So uh, yeah, keep tuned for that. It'll be out very soon. And uh, catch us later. Have a good one. Thank you.